Howdy, everybody. Turn this up in my headphones, Charles. <laughs> you got it, partner. <laughs> I'm not going to do the voice. The accent. <laughs> You're not going to do the voice. Hello, everybody. I'm just going to keep this music playing in the background for a little bit because today is a very special episode. This dramatic spaghetti western royalty-free music can only mean one thing. We're talking about we're talking about King Killer Chronicles in our dramatically titled episode. Quoth and Denna, the good, the bad, and the crooked. Yeehaw! <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> We're a fantasy western podcast now, so everyone's just going to have to get used to that. <laughs> I don't know how well the joke is going to land. Do, do people get the reference to the good, the bad, and the ugly? Who knows? Well, but we're here to To those that do, to it's about... going to be epic. <laughs> the deep King Killer. You have on one sphere, you have the um, deep lore fans of King Killer Chronicles that will get the crooked reference. And then right. on the other sphere, you have Western fans that know what the good, the bad, and the ugly is. And then you have that beautiful market that where the two spheres overlap, that sweet middle section that we just directly targeted. You know, the first in oh, the yeah. fantasy game doing it. <laughs> Yeah, no one has ever played royalty-free Western music or... (laughs) Well, who knows about that? But they've not done it while talking about Denna and Quoth's relationship from the Kinkiller Chronicle. That's right. And what an interesting conversation it is. Um, Fans of the show may know that both of us, but particularly Dylan, has a very strong history on the internet as the defender of the Quoth Denna relationship. And we've been kicking around this episode idea for a long time. And we thought, you know, it's been so long. We've been so busy reading First Law and Wheel of Time that we we need to give the King Killer people out there more content. And we just miss talking about King Killer. And it is time. Yeah. I have been thinking for a while now, behind the scenes talking to charles we need more king killer content and because i otherwise the internet will have to face my long ramblings <laughs> about <laughs> about denna and they'll still have to face and, that <laughs> yeah no that's true but they'll have to face more of it because i won't be able to get the catharsis of talking about it on the podcast and and that's their choice once they've clicked an episode called the good the bad and the crooked <laughs> <laughs> Quoth and Denna's relationship. They know what they're getting themselves into. They they want to hear this in some form, I assume. But otherwise, there's just innocent people on Twitter, on Phantology's Discord, or wherever else <laughs> that are having to deal with my ramblings. And you know what I'm just realizing, Dylan? That this what? is an episode in three parts. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yes. <laughs> That's well, I did not realize that. I only we realized it just now as we're sitting here recording. <laughs> right. Well, let me do my warning first and let everyone know that it's a good time to turn this down in their headphones if you have not yet read The Name of the Wind and The Wise Man's Fear because we will play pretty fast and loose. We'll be... Uh, Oh, oh, I want to say, like, quick on the draw. That, <laughs> that's a thing. Right? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Quick on the draw. <laughs> With spoilers <laughs> for those two books. Uh, everything else, I, I don't see any reason why we would spoil any other books, but. We, yeah, quick on the draw with those spoilers for the two main books in the King Killer Chronicle as we talk about Quothena, Charles. Ooh, that's Quothena. what, yeah, it's better than Dano. <laughs> <that. laughs> Dwoth? <laughs> Dwo- <laughs> with a V? <laughs> D V O T H E. Dwoth. It's uh, pretty brutal. Uh, so, yeah, as the title suggests, you know, we're going to break this into three parts the good of of what is it ken kenna quena quothena quothena thank you the bad parentheses bad and the the controversy and 
the crooked, which Rothfuss has weaved into the story of the King Killer Chronicles that I'm very excited to get to at the right. end of this. So would you like so, to navigate the, way, the waters here? I would love to. The way that we've laid this out is that the good is pretty much what it sounds like. What is good about th their relationship itself as well as its portrayal, how Rothfuss chooses to depict it and how he conveys it in his story. The bad uh, is more, because both Charles and I really like it, it's going to be a biased take, <laughs> I'm sure, but it is supposed to be, why is there so much hate about Quothena, and why does the internet seem so bothered by what's going on when it comes to Quoth and Denna in the Kinkiller Chronicle, despite these books being so beloved and we'll we'll try to give credence to all of that and then the the third part is the crooked which is what is the role of the unreliable narration in the quothena relationship and mm. we'll discuss that as you may remember from reading the series if you're still listening uh and <laughs> you were not thrown off by the spoilers then uh, Denna has a crooked nose, according to Bast, in the <laughs> larger frame story. So we take that, Charles and I do, to mean that maybe the way that Quoth portrays Denna and his relationship with her is not 100% truthful. Uh, <laughs> I think that's pretty fair to say when it comes to Quoth. I and would say that 100%. Um, so... All that and more to be excited about, but let's get into the good, because we have a lot to say about this section, and what is good about the Quothena relationship. And for us, you know, we are super big on characters, and when it comes to the portrayal of a, like, real, young, love, will-they-won't-they they couple— this was such an honest, beautiful portrayal, and that's why we praise it so much. Exactly. Yeah, we like to say that it's realistic, it's honest, and it's relatable when you consider the fact that these two are teenagers. I'm going to drop a teaser for this episode. I probably <laughs> have already by now when you're actually hearing this on Twitter. That's literally just Patrick Rothfuss saying, they're teenagers. <laughs> and I think that that's a huge piece for me when it comes to the Quothena relationship that we don't want to lose sight of. We know this is a fantasy series for adults, and oftentimes adults can get frustrated looking back on a portrayal of the angstiness that comes with teenage love struckness, if that's a word. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's something that Rothfuss does extremely well here is portray a teenage, like, I guess, love interest sort of relationship because as everyone listening knows, we don't really know the extent to which they, they actually have a romantic relationship because right. it's not much has happened in that direction. Yeah, there's just been a lot of this will they, won't they thing going <laughs> yeah. on. And I think, you know, a lot of us were teenagers once uh, <laughs> and we can often relate to that. And I know for me, it feels very true to the experience of, of being a teenager. Oh, I would agree. And, you know, I think all of us reading this relate, like this relationship between Quoth and Denna, that might be part of the reaction that we're getting is that it's reminding us of relationships in our own lives. I'll also say like, yes, they, Rothfuss nailed this love-struck teenager portrayal. And I also feel like us as fantasy fans who have read lots of fantasy books, the kind of commitment to the will-they-won't-they they, awkward teenager romance is kind of unique in the world of fantasy romances. You know, traditionally we get these epic like, oh, I'm the humble guy that turns out to be the prince and you're the princess or you know you know that kind of relationship yeah. and it's much more romanticized and um you know a lot more grandiose and quote as a storyteller recognizes those things but then when it comes to his own life it's it's much more complex if nothing else and i think that's what um 
makes this almost like as even as a fantasy romance stand out. It, it, it's just the fact that Rothfuss and I always talk about Rothfuss commitment to his characters and this relationship is no exception to that. Yes, the great Patrick Rothfuss once said, I like to imply more than I like to exply and <laughs> then reflect on the fact that exply probably wasn't a word. <laughs> and I think that that's what's going on here is so much of what Rothfuss is doing with the Quothena relationship is portraying what he feels is how two teenagers would interact when they're both insecure, when they both have these really rough, tragic backgrounds. We get the sense, though we don't have it revealed yet two books in what Denna's background is. We get the sense, I feel very strongly, that she's had a pretty tragic background herself. And they're both just figuring out who they are. And uh, to watch two characters that kind of have this like narcissistic but underlying insecure uh, thing going on for themselves try to relate and be vulnerable with each other when they're so young <laughs> it is, I think, so like touching I guess for me in a weird way like right. it's hard to watch at times but it hits me right in the feels and I, I find it so very relatable and complex like you were saying Charles and I think a big thing with Rothfuss is that he's being deliberate in how he's portraying all of this how he's implying what he's implying and we do get these uh, moments where uh, you know it's like uh Sim gets on Quoth for how she's obviously interested in him and Quoth kind of dismisses it where it's like, oh, she hasn't said anything along those lines. <laughs> and it's super, I think, frustrating for a lot of people, but it's also the kind of thing that it's like Quoth as someone that's young and inexperienced and uh, all those kind of things, it's hard for him to pick up up on what is being implied right. if it's not explicitly right. stated and i think that's you know it's frustrating for for readers too when they're like but it's so clearly being implied yeah. i think you're touching on something really great there when you say it's frustrating because like there's multiple reasons why this relationship is good and part of the reason that people feel frustrating is why it's so good yes, and that can exactly. create some very strong feelings from certain readers people react to it so strongly whether they're for it or not and there's something to be said for the good and the ability to yes um get those reactions from readers as an author and i know there's a great patrick rothfuss quote here that we've pulled that says uh, some days i feel like denna is the best character i've ever written because different people feel different ways about her and they can justify their beliefs with path passages from the text. Some days I feel like Denna is my greatest failure as an author because I haven't brought her to you as clearly as I sometimes wish to. Some days I just really want a donut. <laughs> <laughs> well said by you and Patrick Rothfuss yeah. there, Charles. <laughs> and I'll say you touch on something that I love so much when you said th the frustration that we're feeling is part of what makes it so good yeah. because <laughs> it's uh, it's eliciting these strong emotional reactions for all of us i feel frustrated and like sad and hurt even at times reading uh, this series and there's something uh, especially around the quote and a relationship and there's something to the fact that a relationship can make me feel so strongly and make all these people who feel that like it's so frustrating and it really to the point where they dislike it or maybe it's too relatable and they dislike it i'm like i don't know there's a lot of relationships that we can read in fantasy and charles we've read some of these ourselves that feel so just like by the books and basic and surface level that it's like okay it's fine i see what the author is doing but they don't make us feel that much and the quote and dinner relationship makes people feel very strongly in all sorts of different ways and that's that gets expressed differently yeah. as love or hate <laughs> of the relationship yeah. but i think making people feel that strongly is in itself gotta be good when it comes to art it's gotta be and i'm always drawn from that quote where rothfuss says you know the reason why he considers her her his greatest failure sometimes is because I haven't brought her to you as clearly as I sometimes 
wish to. Mm. And I, it gets me thinking, and I and for to Rothfuss, I would say, don't worry about it, man, because the point is it's not clear, and that's like the the good in it. There's no way to properly say, oh, you know, these characters are young and and confused and also on their own doing their own things that may or may not conflict with each other and we just don't know that yet because he's trying to tell the story from quote's perspective you know so like maybe he wishes to tell us more about denna but he's you know i'm gonna go back to this word committed to telling it through quote's story and to me that just adds to all this goodness that we're talking about it it's not clear it's it, it's complicated and it, and it's confusing and that's what makes it so beautiful wow i totally agree charles i think you, you said that so well that <laughs> the fact that we are able to ooh, like uh, i mean the fact that we're able to have these kind of conversations over and over and over again and come up with new things. I mean, what you, you just said uh, there had me reflect on like totally new st stuff. And one of those new things is that like Denna and Quoth are such a catalyst for discussion and such a catalyst for digging deeper into all of this implicit stuff that hasn't been brought to us in a way that's like hit us over the head with it that has been maybe not as clear as Rothfuss sometimes wishes to <laughs> right. sometimes uh, right and he's very careful with his words yes. if anyone's careful <laughs> with his words it's Patrick Rothfuss right. and he used sometimes right and I think that that's if he just handed it to us on a silver platter, what we're supposed to think about Quoth and Denna, Charles, you and I would be far less intrigued by the yeah. relationship. The internet would talk about it far less than they do. We probably would not have recorded like multiple episodes at this point that are very Denna focused. And all of that to me is certainly part of this, the good section. Right. And to build up, on that, you know, Rothfuss trying to some days communicate to us Denna in the bring her to us, you know, as the way he wishes to. And I think the some of the ways that he does that and what adds to these beautiful moments in King Killer Chronicles is these analogies that we often get, you know, because Quoth can't tell us directly because he doesn't even know or so in his story, in his perspective, but he can tell us other stories and we can make the connections, you know, and that's between things like Jack's in the moon and, and, and Tack and the fact that Rothfuss can tell these stories or have these moments and have them be such an integral part of all of King Killer Chronicle, again, as to that art that we're talking about in in Rothfuss writing style right and to bring people back up to speed if it's been a little while since they've read the king killer chronicle you remember the jackson the moon story is basically a story about a uh, a child Jax who has uh, basically never been happy and he's always sought after that thing that would make him happy and he thought if he finally captured the moon then after all his plight and journey he'd be happy and it kind of ends on this i don't know bittersweet's the right word but it ends on this note of well <laughs> if whether or not he's happy we don't know that's paraphrasing mm -hmm. of course it sounds much better if i actually pulled the quote that rothfuss uh, <laughs> said and uh, it's kind of this story about to me anyway a like journey over destination mm. it's not about capturing the moon outright it's about enjoying your time that you do get to spend with something that is uh of in the moon's case it's a something um that is uh, just wonderful to have in your company not to have possessed and i think that the the tack analogy is another good one charles people might remember tack is the beautiful game is basically yeah. a board game a la chess but the point is to enjoy the beautiful game and not to get caught up on just trying to win in a ruthless manner and again this sort of journey of her destination piece and i think that uh, you so that the tack one is pretty directly paralleled to denna which is uh, this like so quote 
which is, so I did not try to win her and contented myself with playing a beautiful game, but there was always a part of me that hoped for more, and so there was a part of me that was always a fool. And I, I think this is something that just, you know, why is it in the good? It's because these analogies are so just beautifully portrayed by Rothfuss, speaking right. of a beautiful game. And, and they apply to so many things, too. You right. can apply it to the meta of just the the mm. nature of King Killer Chronicles. You can apply it to a Quothena. It, it works in so many ways, and it's so subtle yet intricately worked into the story that it's no other way to describe it but art. Exactly. And that's the thing, right? Quothena is just another part of this larger theme that Rothfuss is portraying about, like, let's enjoy the journey and all that, because the destination, we know what that is, according to Rothfuss. Yeah. We know it ends in some form of tragedy. So you just got to enjoy the beautiful game. And I think Quothena helps establish that. And we'll get into more when we get to the the bad. We'll get into, I think, more of the reason why folks don't like that aspect as much or that can be frustrating for them. Very well said, sir. And speaking of frustration, are we ready to get into the bad, air quotes? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. I do want to also say I like Denna. I think this gets lost in the things. I like Denna's like, mystery around her. I think she's oh, very yeah. like intriguing as a character. Uh, in, I think also she has witty, good banter, and all those seven words uh, lines are uh, at least hit me right in the feels. And I'll say that I, I kind of enjoy the Quoth and Denna back and forth when they're bantering some. And I think that that's also well portrayed. And all this mystery around her is, is interesting to delve into. But we'll delve into a little bit more of that probably during the discussion of the Crooked. So let's uh, let's get going with the bad. Well said, sir. We will get into those mysteries more when we unearth the origin of the Crooked. But for now, we are in the bad, and when we say bad, we're talking really about, like, why there's this controversy around Quothena, and it's, you know, we understand it, because we had talked about it in The Good, where it's, like, it's frustrating, you know, we said that multiple times, and it's like, why don't you just express your feelings to each other, this would be over so fast, uh, this is even a sentiment that Quoth has given about other relationships in the King yes. Killer Chronicle, which I thought was so funny. He's like, why don't they just tell each other they like each other and move on? And it's like, really, Quoth, you of all people are going to say that? <laughs> <laughs> and I think his reaction is a very common one that readers have of, of Quothena. So it's like, yeah, this is a normal way to feel from the outside, right? Like we're watching these two from the outside as readers and being like, why can't they? But then when we're in Quoth's head and Quoth is lying next to her and they're both like on the rocks or whatever from after swimming and he's just too nervous to make the next move. It's like we feel that, you know, and that is that kind of frustrating, uncomfortable moments that we just want them to connect. And you make a great point there, Charles, about how... <laughs> it can be even more frustrating for us as readers when Rothfuss has these moments <laughs> where he's implying and not explying. And uh, I think it can build on that frustration even more. It can be even more aggravating to see that Quoth is capable of seeing the issue with relate with another relationship and say like, what is wrong with this guy? How does he see that in someone else, but he can't see that in himself and what's going on with him. So if you don't, kind of you don't have this thought process that at least i started going toward which is like well rothfuss is trying to validate you here he's not trying to make you more frustrated he's trying to tell you like yes it's easy when you're outside of the relationship to see that there's something wrong with like two people being unable to be vulnerable and express themselves but it's so much harder when you're the person that's in it and i think that's part of why like this the bad stuff is like why are people uh, frustrated it's like well quoth has 
we're the people on the outside looking in. And so we're not the ones who are emotionally compromised by the situation to the point where we can't express ourselves or see what see the forest for the trees, if you will. Well said. So we can see it's so obvious that Denna and Quoth like each other and we're like sim we're like yeah. just do it just do the thing yeah. and i think broth makes us sit with that and of course it's like they're often toxic around each other they're often frustrating and the scenes are uncomfortable to sit with but i mean I, well i'm trying to stick with it's okay to have those emotional reactions uh we are in the bad section i guess yeah. uh and i guess for me why it hits more as good is because of all these things i feel like ralph this is yeah he's acknowledged it he's worked it into the yes. story and he's made that an integral part of quote's character which is mm. how it it becomes good for me uh which but i totally understand these feelings i feel them as well another one that i totally am like sympathizing with is that we aren't really that invested in Denna a lot of times. She pops up everywhere. She leaves whenever she wants. Like, she's coming and going. We don't really know what she's doing. We don't really know much about her. There's still a lot of mystery. And these books, these two books are not small. There are thousands of pages between the two of them, right? So you're in this story for so, so long. And we're told constantly that Quoth and Denna are this key part of this story for Quoth's tragedy. And even after 2,000 pages, we don't really know Dennis' part in all of this yet. We know there's she's living her own life, and Quoth knows nothing about it, but we don't know what it is. And that makes for good theories, but we're going into book three, and we don't know where the story's going. And that's a lot of investment to ask for a reader to stick along for 2,000-plus pages and continue to stay invested and that to me has always been one of those like put it in the bad but you know it's part of the story Rothfuss is is patient in telling yeah and it does fall under that umbrella for me too of like we wouldn't be talking about it as much we wouldn't be as invested in all of it if it weren't for all this mystery right. and all this popping up all over the place and it's I, I get that people want to see more <laughs> more answers and less questions when it comes to the King Killer Chronicle. I think that is fair a fair reaction to be having when you've been waiting as long as you've been waiting, especially if you're someone who's been reading these books since the beginning. Of course, of course you want these answers and you're feeling frustrated by it and it's a valid reaction and I guess my own take is always like well we i think i think rothfuss has said i'm paraphrasing here like it can be late once but it can be bad forever yeah. um so i'm like <laughs> i've got like yes you're valid in wanting it you're valid in like if being frustrated or whatever but once it's out it's out and we want it to be good and i'm willing to wait as long as it takes to get the answers to all these mysteries around denna and the quothena relationship <laughs> if there's any fantasy author that embodies that sentiment it's patrick rothfuss for sure <laughs> yeah yeah well i'll say uh, an another thing that i i hinted at around the when we're still in the good section was this idea that part of what's frustrating about the Denna relationship is, or the Quothena relationship, is that we have a sense that of where it is going to end, and that sense suggests that it is not going to end well. So, <laughs> uh, I, I I was thinking the will they won't they thing can be tough when it feels like you already know that they won't. Yeah. So what keeps us invested and uh, enjoying and all this kind of stuff when we're dealing with a will they won't they? Because those are classic things that we like. We consume a lot of that and seem to enjoy it, but I think a lot of the joy for people comes from this like rooting for it to end well. So when it, things look like they won't go well, they're like, oh no, it's not going the way I want. But then they get that moment where it looks like it, it is going to go well and it is going to end well. 
and they will. And then they're like, yes, this is good. But when it comes to the Quothena relationship, both moments just make you feel sad because it's either it's starting to look like the Quothena relationship is not going well in the moment, and you're like, oh no, here it goes. This is where it goes awry, hmm. and that's sad. Or it's starting to look like things are going well, and there's this lingering feeling that, oh no, like it's going well right now, but the other shoe is going to drop, yeah. and this is going to be even worse in the end. And again, another thing that is beautifully, realistically, and uh, complexly portrayed by Rothfuss, but it doesn't really invite the reader to feel a lot of joy around the Quothena relationship. So well said. I feel like that's always been kind of one of the hooks of King Killer is that you know you're going to end up at the Waystone Inn at, at some point. Quoth is a man waiting to die. So when you're in the middle of all this teenage romance, it's like, well, you know, there's still a whole nother book and we know this isn't going to work out the way that we might be expecting it to just from what the scene is showing us. And I think people just want the plot to kind of move along and like, let's, let's go like with this meandering, will they, won't they stuff, let's make it happen. And for, for a lot of people, I, I, I feel that <laughs> especially, you know, <laughs> as we're continuing to wait for our, our third book here. <laughs> Right. And that's another big complaint that I think fits in the bad section, which is that people feel the plot slows down when Denna is in the mix. Mm. And uh, these Quoth and Denna moments don't really drive what I think a lot of people perceive the plot to be forward. I guess this is this is a hard one for me to talk about because I think like it's fair to want a story that is like Quoth avenges his parents against these evil Chandrian. I think in a lot of ways Rothfuss has teed us up to expect that in some way. And then people who that is a big part of what they're reading for see these Quothena moments um, uh, along with a bunch of other moments in the series as distracting from the plot. And it's like, oh, Denna's here. Like, it's just going to be a bunch of Quoth pining over <laughs> her and hanging out with her. And uh, like, we know it's not going to work out anyway. <laughs> right. Exactly. So it's like, uh, that's one of the biggest complaints I see is that like, uh, even if people like Denna as a person or they even get some uh, like, see good things about the Denna and Quoth relationship, they see it as a distraction from the plot. I, I don't think it's even... A, I think there's more to be said with the Chandrian and Denna, but maybe that's in the crooked section. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's a big complaint, I think. And it's a valid one. Um, anything else we need to vent in the bad section before we move on to the crooked? I'll say the last thing I wanted to mention was that people f find the Quoth, like Quoth and Denna interactions, sometimes they find them sappy and pining and annoying and <laughs> things like that. I don't. Uh, <laughs> it's so bad. I'm bad at the bad section, Charles. <laughs> I can't do it. I'm like, people think this, but he was like, uh, yeah, I think that that is another talking point that people have about the Quothena relationship, and, and it will be relevant to the crooked mm -hmm. part. And look, uh, we talked about the idea of tack and the beautiful game, and that's such a huge part of their relationship. And if you're just not invested in these moments of just enjoying the moment for what it is, when you're worried about like the plotting and the fact that we know where this is going and you know all these other things, then it there's not much left for you at that point. But in, the idea is that it's this beautiful game, that we're able to have this honest portrayal of a um, lovesick teenagers that we know will end in tragedy, and we can play that game. But, you know, if, if you're trying to, to win, it can be a little frustrating. Right. And I think also people find it frustrating when it reminds them of maybe their own teenage, <laughs> uh, or or not even necessarily teenage, but their own romantic relationships that have not or attempt gone at romantic well, relationships. Or, or, yeah, <laughs> so I think that 
<laughs> it's fair if this brings you to a place where it's reminding you of your own heartbreak that <laughs> maybe that's not what you're looking for in a book, yes. even if it is well portrayed. <laughs> yes, it could be triggering <laughs> at, at some level for people that uh, would be sensitive to these kinds of moments, right. for sure. It is for me, too. I just want to feel that way for whatever reason. <laughs> and Dylan loves it, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that brings us to um, the third piece to all of this, this three-part uh, episode here that we so uh, beautifully planned. Accidentally. <laughs> and that is The Crooked. And that is, of course, as we mentioned at the top of the episode, related to Bast's comment when Quoth is like, she was perfect. And Bast interjects, Denna had a crooked nose. Right. A crooked nose. A crooked nose. Yeah. A so crooked nose. I, to us, this has always symbolized the idea that behind or maybe underneath all of Quoth's portraying Denna as this perfect person person and pining over her and all this kind of stuff is we cannot trust everything that he says about Denna or his relationship with Denna and he might uh, you know tales from the waystone uh, actually tag that's it tales from waystone king killer podcast uh, definitely if you're enjoying this episode you want to definitely check, check, out check them out they're, they're awesome <laughs> if you're and, listening to this and you like it then you just gotta go check it out <laughs> yeah so uh, they tagged us in a uh, <laughs> they were highlighting uh, some of the this is phoenix was highlighting some of the seven word segments from the book and uh, she highlighted Let's view her in a rosy light. <laughs> I was like, no, all my, all my Denna, uh, all the Denna fans out there at the FDF podcast are liking this. So, I, yeah, so appreciate that always. And yeah, I think that Quoth does view her in a very rosy light. And because of that, we can't, we can't trust everything that he's saying. Yes. And, that is such an important piece to the story. And that's what we've always, like, when it comes to addressing some of these things in the bad, that's something that Dylan and I repeat over and over when we talk King Killer. It's like, we need to consider, like, how the story is being told. It's intentionally 90% through Quoth's perspective. And everything that Quoth is telling us is romanticized. How many times have we read where it's like, oh, to tell the best story, you've got to embellish a little bit. Or the best truths are things that are kind of ad like adjusted a little bit. We know Quoth has a background as a storyteller, an entertainer, someone who takes pride in this beautiful game of telling his life story. He demands it's told his way and no other way. Like These are Literally all things his, that we yeah. need to consciously be aware of. So when we get these moments at the Waystone Inn, which is not Quoth's story controlled by Quoth. It's Rothfuss showing us what's happening. And Bast says, well, you know, Denna actually w wasn't this perfect visage that you're describing. Like, she had a bit of a crooked nose, you know, where it's like, oh, well, that's not how I was picturing Denna. You know, it's it gives us a glimpse into the inconsistencies in Quoth's story or the implications that Quoth is trying to... to convey about about denna that we need to pay attention to and that's why we've called this the crooked and that's why we've like that line from bass talking about denna's nose has been such a important one for us yeah and i mean crooked also implies some degree of distortion right mm -hmm. and i think that's always you know rufus is so precise in how he chooses to convey things and i I personally believe that the choice to go with something like a crooked nose uh, to have something a little askew from just being straightforward is probably deliberate from uh, the great Patrick Rothfuss. And, and this is a little bit of that crooked perspective we get. So I, a big quote that I had actually, or I saw in a video 
Oh, that was sent to us by a wonderful fan I've had some email exchanges with who's also named Charles. Mm. So another great Charles in the world of the FTF podcast. <laughs> uh, there's just so so many of them. Uh, there's, there's a video where he, he wrote like children stories that are not actually children stories. And I won't say more than that, <laughs> but... Uh, they're really good. And if you watch him read one, it's amazing. And something they says during that is if you're not paying attention, Rothfuss, that is, uh, says, if you're not paying attention to what's in this book, it is not my fault. <laughs> and <laughs> I've always an loved that. Quote. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of and, my favorite authors you could apply that quote to, like Rothfuss and Abercrombie and, and, right. and the like, where it's like, if you don't realize what you're reading, <laughs> it's not the author's fault. It's intentional. Right. And you cannot, it's fair to not like it, yeah. but you, you can't just pin it all on the author if if it came from not paying attention. And I think that with Rothfuss, everything's in there to say that this this story is not the reliable narration of all of these events that we discussed in the bad, I guess. It's like uh, this idea of, uh, like, well, it's frustrating to me that Quoth is always pying after her. And uh, another thing that people get frustrated with is that she's, like, perfect in every way. And it's like, well, no, she, she probably isn't. And uh, mm. it's, it is more true to the like reality of the story, I guess, uh, which maybe is an oxymoron. And that's such an important part of the Quothena relationship is whatever version we're getting is Quoth's version. We, and this is how Quoth is reflecting on his life and reflecting on his early relationship with Dena. And that's how we have to, that's the lens we have to filter these yeah. scenes through. And to me, that just adds a, a layer of intrigue. It makes me want to know what happens with Quoth and Denna. Like, what is Denna's real story is my question. Like, who even is Denna? Like, we have we really don't know. So all we know is she's a woman that is real, that has a nose that's crooked. <laughs> that, that, those are facts. And we don't know where she is now. We don't know if, you know what her what she's doing and when she's not popping up in quotes life so conveniently at all these random places you know it's like what is she really up to you know are these meetups too convenient you who, who knows yeah well said charles and i think some people would disagree with you that you can even be 100 percent sure that she's uh a woman and not the moon in, <laughs> like embodied. There's some great Dena theories out there. <laughs> yeah. Some people think that she's literally the moon. Charles and I have always thought that it's more an analogy or a parallel <laughs> that she is like the moon in some ways. Yeah. Um, it's a nice metaphor, uh, but I don't right. think Quoth is like lying on the rocks with the moon. <laughs> right. And uh, I'll <laughs> cue the Rothfuss gif that says, they're teenagers. <laughs> but... <laughs> I'll say that uh, a big thing when it comes to the crooked is this idea of Dena and Quoth as potential mirror images of each other. Yeah. And it's, uh, first off, no wonder Quoth is so <laughs> in love with her if she's his mirror image. Exactly. Right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> Makes sense for Quoth's narcissism that uh, what could be more appealing to him than uh, a mirror image of him. And then this bit that's really interesting from the perspective of the crooked is, are we just not getting Dena's perspective? And is that a big reason why we a lot of people don't like the Dena character? And uh, basically, a lot of people like Quoth, although that you know, some people don't <laughs> Not, that's another controversy but, <laughs> right but more people like quoth than like denna i think is fair to say probably and i'll say it seems like it's easier to justify quoth's frustrations with denna for us as the readers sometimes than it is to justify denna's frustrations with 
quoth, and she kind of gets a a bad rap because of that. But we know that she is actually looking for quoth a lot, and though it doesn't, and we know quoth is looking for her too, but it doesn't seem that way to us as readers because we spend so much time literally with Quoth just like walking around Imre like oh is Denna here is Denna there no and we feel like Quoth is just pining after her constantly and sometimes we feel like she isn't showing him the same level of commitment to the relationship and I think people find that frustrating but I think that is the crooked at work yes is that we aren't there with Denna when she is looking for quoth and she finds quoth I would say if you look at just the like the facts can uh, which honestly <laughs> probably fair view Charles with how crooked things are yeah. to say that we really can't take anything for granted but if we assume the literal events of like who found who is true Denna seems to find Quoth more than Quoth finds her, Mm -hmm. which, with how hard Quoth can be to locate, maybe implies she's having even more instances of searching through Imre or wherever looking for Quoth. Yeah, and that's so well said. You talk about Quoth's narcissism, right? And so it's like any time we're talking about Denna, it's how Denna affects Quoth, right? Quoth is only talking about Denna in the perspective of, okay, she's talking to me now and I'm feeling this way about her. And when she's gone, it's like she does not exist because Quoth isn't thinking outside of like Mm -hmm. his immediate self. And that's how he gets into trouble (laughs) constantly, right? Where people are like, oh, you're going to leave the school, right? He's like, what are you talking about? I won the lawsuit or whatever. And it's like, yeah, but you like upset everyone here. No one wants you here. He's like, oh, okay, I guess I'll leave. (laughs) And you know, he says and does stuff in politics that gets him in trouble all the time just because he doesn't think outside of his own little world in his head and so denna enters that world and we see those moments but then she leaves and we don't get anything and that's that crooked mirror that you had mentioned that we're looking through and i think that's just another super important aspect of this crooked segment is quote is so self-absorbed that we're yeah. only getting Denna and how Denna relates to Quoth, and we're not getting these other pieces. And it's these other pieces that are going to be super, super important. Quoth is going to wake up at some point and start thinking, oh, I wonder what Denna does in her free time, which she never really thinks about. <laughs> so it's like, like, you know, like, I wonder what she's into. I wonder how she spends her days. You know, like, I maybe he'll start asking those questions soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair, Charles. And I think to continue to build on that idea of of quotes narcissism presenting a crooked perspective on Denna, we as readers are being told the story that is so quote centric <laughs> because our narcissistic uh, at this point uh, t- have bartender basically yeah. is telling us his life story, and it's going to be so focused on things that have happened to him that I think that's part of why it feels like the plot slows around Mm. Denna because if the plot is just Quoth and his amazingness and his story of how he became a legend, then this one person who comes along and makes him act like a buffoon (laughs) doesn't feel like (laughs) she is advancing the plot. But that's Quoth's, I think, narcissism and the perspective that's uh, made askew by that kind of changing the way that we view Denna. So, so well said. Um, Anything else about the crooked before we ride off into the sunset? (laughs) Well played, Charles. Well, you know I have more to... But I will... I'll leave these later discussions because they're kind of... The other things I wanted to talk about, Charles, are more like theory-based, based based Mm. on the idea of the unreliable narration and, and maybe maybe we can do another episode at some point. I, you know, I'm never short of things to say about Kingkiller in general and Quothena in particular. And Kingkiller theory of, episode. To, I think yes. that's exciting. Yeah, that could be cool. For sure. So maybe some, some theorizing later on and I'll save these talking points. Wow. Oh, great tease. Um, I agree. I think, you know, there's a time and place for the theories, but this idea of, not knowing and this distorted lens of the narration just opens the door for all kinds of really really interesting mm. 
theories that I would love to get into. Me too, Charles. I think this, I think this whole uh, interaction with you for me, Charles, mm-hmm. goes in the category of the good. I've had uh-huh. a great time chatting, I would particular with you as this, I always do. I would segment this in the good as well, Dylan. It has been my pleasure to be riding alongside you in this two horse town <laughs> do you're really committed to, I, I, do I don't know a lot of western tropes that. so i'm trying <laughs> partner yeah i've totally forgotten that that was the thing we were doing are you is that is that sweet sweet outro music gonna be normal no, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> let's get it going thank you thank you everyone <laughs> for joining us on this epic spaghetti western of an episode <laughs> that is Dana and Quoth. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Whoosh, whoosh. No, <laughs> the crooked. And the crooked, not the ugly. I didn't say ugly. <laughs> Don't sue us, movie studios. <laughs> Clint Eastwood. <laughs> They're listening, Charles. I don't think... You know, they tuned out once we got into the bad. Yeah. You know, they're big Dana fans. Yeah, I, I like to think so anyway. Um, if you like what you heard today, everyone, let us know. Support the show by interacting with us on Twitter at the FTF Podcast with a number one at the end. We're also on Facebook and Instagram at the FTF Podcast. You can also send us an email at the FTF Podcast at gmail. Dot com. Now, send Dylan, send me things about Denna. <laughs> it send me conversation it, only if you're Denna. ready, because he will he will engage quite thoroughly. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> be ready for that. <laughs> um, Dylan, if people like what they heard and they want to continue support the show, they're like, you know what? These are two cool hombres, and I want to. Uh, show them some love Uh, what can they do if they're listening on Apple Podcasts toss five stars to our podcast and all you gotta do is scroll down on that Apple Podcast page until you see stars Uh, we'd love it if you chose to click five of those if you happen to have some extra time then you can leave us a review and that's super helpful for people finding our podcast and things like that but just listening, just all of you listening. wonderful folks, that is more than enough. We appreciate it so much. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And as always, go forth and conquer, friends.